Part 1. You are going to hear a conversation between Angela and Mr. Ray. Angela is applying to join the library. Listen to the conversation and complete the form below. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will never hear the recording a second time. Hello. How can I join the library? Well, you need to make an application. Would you like to do it now? Yes, if I can. One moment and I'll get the form. Now, I just need to ask you a few questions before you sign at the bottom. Okay. Your full name, please. Angela Mary Price. Price? Yes, that's right. Okay, and your address? Apartment 3, 86 Bridge Street, Pimlico. Bridge Street? That's just near here, isn't it? Yes, not very far. Good. So the postcode must be 2065, right? Yes, that's right. Now, your telephone number. I need both home and work if you have them. My home number is 8763-5142, and work is 8456-1307. Do you need anything else, like ID or something? Yes, your driver's license will do, if you have one. Right. It's easy to remember. I know it by heart. 4040AC. I'm afraid I'll also need to see it. Okay. Here it is. Thanks. And your date of birth, please? 24 March 1981. Okay. Thanks. That's the most important part completed. But if you don't mind, I'd also like to ask you a few questions for a survey we're conducting. Yes, that's okay. Now you have some time to read questions 6 to 10. As the conversation continues, answer questions 6 to 10. What kind of books do you like to read? Here's a list to look at. Oh, it varies from time to time, but I always like to relax and learn about other countries I might visit one day. I don't like anything too heavy or serious, unless it's about animals or the environment. I'm not really into sport very much. Anything else? Well, I do like entertaining at home. You know, dinner parties. So I suppose you'll have something for me in that line. The pictures in those books always make me hungry, although they never seem to turn out exactly as they look in the books. Fine. I think that's all I need now, except I need you to sign here on the application form. Oh, and I almost forgot. The membership fee is $20, which is refundable if you no longer stay a member. There you are. Do I sign at the bottom here? Yes, that's right. You can borrow books now if you wish, although your membership card won't be ready until next week. So if you want to borrow today, you can pick up your card when you return your first books. That's if you want to take some now. I think I will, but I'll have a look around first. Okay. Take your time. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. Everyone knows that we have achieved a huge amount in terms of space exploration. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16.
Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Everyone knows that we have achieved a huge amount in terms of space exploration. The space race between ourselves and Russia went on for nearly 20 years, but we were the first to land a man on the moon. At that time, the space race was very close, and the Russians very nearly got to the moon before us. For me, the most exciting invention, and the invention that really showed we were ahead in the space race, was the reusable space shuttle. It was first successful in 1981, and has since been used on many missions. The reusable shuttle can carry astronauts on space missions and can serve as a laboratory in which to conduct experiments. It can be used to transport equipment to space stations or to collect or repair satellites. The shuttle carries between five and seven crew members. When a mission is complete, the shuttle fires thrusters, which propel it back into the Earth's atmosphere. It then glides down to make its landing. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Although the remains of very early ovens have been found in many parts of the world, it was here that they were first used frequently in people's homes. In ancient Greece and in other parts of Europe and Turkey, people used ovens to bake bread. But it seems there was only one large oven that everyone shared. Here the remains of villages from 5,000 years ago show that each mud brick house was constructed with an oven and that baking bread and perhaps cooking meat was very common. The ovens were made of clay and shaped like a beehive. Inside they had shelves so that a number of loaves could be cooked together and an opening at the bottom from which ash could be removed. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a discussion between students Maria and Jack. In the first part of the discussion, they're talking about their opinions about some of the things in their universities. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Two four one four double three one. Good afternoon. May I speak to Jack Robert, please? Speaking, please. Hi, Jack. This is Maria. Hello, Maria. How are you getting on there? Fine. I arrived in Nottingham yesterday. I've just settled down and I live on the campus of Nottingham University. Oh, that's good. Do you like the campus? Yes, it's beautiful. What do you think of yours? Edinburgh University? It's marvellous. It's on a hill, 
and very close to the sea. I like it very much. It sounds beautiful. Jack, what's the weather like there? Oh, it's fine and sunny. It's said that the weather here is very nice in summer, but awful in winter. What's the weather like in Nottingham? Well, it's a bit depressing. It's been raining since yesterday. I can't go out, so I have to stay in my room. What about your room? Is it a nice one? Yes, it's small and elegant. How about yours? Mine is an ordinary one. It's a twin study room. I share it with one of my classmates. He's intelligent and very friendly. We're getting on quite well. How's your roommate? She's very nice, but a little bit quiet. She likes reading and seldom speaks. By the way, do you like the Scottish food there? Oh, I like it. It's very delicious. Oh, really? I don't like the food here. It's disgusting. It has no taste. I have to cook for myself in my room. Well, Maria, as the saying goes, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Come on, don't be too choosy. Oh, someone's at the door. I have to answer it, Maria. I'll call you this evening. Bye. Bye. Ellen, a student union officer, is conducting a survey about the university facilities. She is asking two students about their opinions. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. I'm Alan and I work for the Student Union. Now, I'd like to hear your opinions about a few things in the university. We've asked for some volunteers to help us conduct this survey into how satisfied students are with the university facilities. First of all, let's take the lecture rooms. We could score them, for instance, 1 is excellent, 2 satisfactory, 3 rather poor and 4 really bad. Robert, you first, please. What do you think about the lecture rooms here? Not so good, I'm afraid. I would score three. They're too small for one thing. Sometimes we can hardly find a seat. Yes, but that doesn't happen very often. Personally, I think they're all right. They're comfortable, and the acoustics are quite reasonable. It doesn't matter where you sit, you can always hear the lecture. I would give two for them. How do you feel about the car parking facilities? Are they adequate? You must be joking. I can never find a car parking space when I need one, and when I finally do, it's a very long walk to the university's teaching building. I'd give it a four. I'm afraid I also agree. We need more car parks urgently. This is perhaps one of the major shortcomings of this campus. It gets a four from me as well. I come to the university 20 minutes early just so I can drive around looking for a parking space. What about the computer centre then? I think it's first class. The software base contains a large selection of learning programs, language games and word processing facilities. I would give a score of one. I quite agree with you. It's very modern and also under the supervision of qualified staff who can offer help to us while we work, should we need them. Oh, good. Well, what do you think of the library facilities? Let's say the periodical room first. Well, I've scored that three. I'm sorry to have to say, but, er, uh, I think the room has poor lighting, and I'm disappointed about that. I've given it a score of one. As far as I'm concerned, it's excellent and well stocked. Thank you, Robert and Mary. Now, let's turn to the photocopying facilities. Hmm, I would give it a score of two. Personally, I think it's all right and it's very helpful. Huh? I would score three. I think it's too expensive for photocopying, and there are not enough machines. Sometimes we have to stand in a line. OK. Now let's talk about the... That is the end of part three. 
You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear some facts and figures about Australia. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Now, I should tell you that the country of Australia is made up of six states and two territories. These are the Australian Capital Territory, New South Wales, the Northern Territory, Queensland, South Australia, Tasmania, Victoria, and Western Australia. The national capital is Canberra. Right, let's turn to the Australian economy. Australia has a prosperous Western-style capitalist economy. Australia is a major exporter of agricultural products, minerals, metals, and fossil fuels. Commodity prices have a big impact on the economy. Australia suffered from the low growth and high unemployment typical of the OECD countries in the early 1990s, but the economy has expanded at reasonably steady rates in recent years. In addition to high unemployment, short-term economic problems include how to balance output and inflation and how to stimulate exports. The economy is made up like this. Agriculture, 3.1%. Industry, 27.7%. Services, 69.2%. The labor force has a similar pattern. The total labor force is 8.2 million. 34% work in finance and services. 23% work in public and community services. 20% work in the wholesale and retail trade. 17% work in manufacturing and industry. And 6% work in agriculture. What are the chief industries of Australia? They are mining, industrial, and transport equipment, food processing, chemicals, and steel. What are Australia's main agricultural products? They are wheat, barley, sugarcane, fruit, cattle, sheep, and poultry. And who do we sell our products to? At present, our chief export market is Japan which takes 24% of our exports. After that, South Korea takes 8%, and New Zealand and the U.S. each take 7%. In years to come, however, we expect China to become a significant trade partner. China already supplies 5% of Australia's imports. This is the same amount as New Zealand. Meanwhile, we take one-fifth in fact, 22% of our imports from the U.S., 17% from Japan, and 6% from the U.K. So what sort of things does Australia import? Well, we import a lot of machinery and transport equipment, especially computers and office machines, also telecommunications equipment, and in addition we have to import oil and petroleum products. So, let's move to the subject of communications in Australia. 
We have an estimated 8.7 million telephones and 9.2 million televisions. There are some 134 television broadcast stations and 325 radio stations. The related subject of transport is naturally very important in such a big country as Australia. Let's look at highways first. There are two kinds of highways paved and unpaved. Paved highways are regular roads with a permanent surface. But actually, we have more unpaved highways, around 60%, than paved, when all the country roads are included. In addition, Australia has a railway network of over 38,000 kilometers. But you'll probably find it hard to believe how many airports we've got. 10, 20, 50, No, the total is 443. Of course, this includes many short runways on farms and in the outback. There are only nine airports with runways of more than 3,000 meters. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Everyone, welcome to Team Our Stream. I'm RP, and I'm super excited to announce that on your demand, we have started a series of writing task one and writing task two to help you score higher. And today, I'm going to explain how to write effective math task one. If your dream is to achieve eight eight plus, this video is for you. So, are you ready? Here we go. The maps below show the development of particular area from 2010 to the present day. Little bit dull, you can see, so you can Google for this map. Here we can see, and again we have to think about, I mean, every little change over here because we have to describe it. The best part of map is we have to describe about each and every little kind of change. Smallest change we have to describe about every kind of change we have to describe. We have to explain. All right. So the statement was the maps below show the development of a particular area from 2010 to the present day, and I have rephrased it and uh, I have written my introduction. The given maps illustrate the changes witnessed by the town Asford, named Asford. This is Asford over here. as for witnessed by the town as for in between the time period from year 2010 and now I mean at present day it means now current year you are talking about okay so here you can see I mean witnessed by illustrate the changes illustrate it's very nice verb you can use it in your introduction illustrate it means shows so in spite of writing shows you should use illustrate to score higher it's very nice okay now see i have how i have written overview overall it is apparent so it's a nice introductory phrase overall it is apparent I mean apparent mean it is clear clear is very you know a common word to use so in spite of writing clear you should write apparent that the town has experienced numerous changes numerous it mean many changes with the erection of more residential area erection it means building of so in spite of writing building again and again you should use synonyms word like erection for building or you can write like construct build erect so your vocabulary should be sound enough so that you can use different kind of word and you can score higher while writing your writing task 1 and writing task 2 so erection of more residential area along with transportation facilities here you can see load of you know erection of more residential area here you can see 
lot of accommodation you can see lot of houses or buildings you can see so i have written numerous changes with direction of more residential area along with transportation facility here you can see road bridge so transportation facilities here is foot bridge and here is river car park here you can see okay and this is how i have explained it at a myopic glance I mean at a first glance it means first glance it can be observed nice phrase again it can be observed that in the year 2010 there was a river in the heart of the town so in 2010 you can see there was a river in the heart it means in the middle of the town which seems to be flown in the same location at present here you can see river river so it means seems to be flown i have used passive voice over here I mean a river is flowing in the same location at present nice however in past people had to cross the river by using ferry here you can see ferry so people used to use ferry in the past location here you can see this is the location for 2010 and this is location for now and we can see certain kind of changes what kind of changes uh, we can see uh, in the map over here so people had to cross river by using ferry which now has been replaced by a bridge here you can see road bridge and foot bridge so now has been replaced by bridge replaced it means changed so nice word in spite of writing change you should replace to score higher and which has been replaced again i have used passive voice by the bridge connected with a minor road leading to a city area here you can see you can see in this map moreover the facility of yacht marine has also been introduced in the southern direction the southern direction you can see uh here yacht facility of yacht here you can see okay and this is how i have written main body paragraph 2 moving toward the rest of the description in the former layout this is former layout when talking about past trees were planted on the northern location here you can see trees were planted on the northern I mean this is north side of so this is north north south east west so it's very important to note down here in your map in north south east and west so that was a river by using ferry which now far no we are here so the trees were planted on the northern location which now has been chopped down and a car park has been built over its place here you can see car park over here I mean in north side you could see a lot of uh, you know trees uh, in 2010 and now you can see I mean they were chopped down I mean it been cut down chopped down it's a nice verb again you can write I mean chopping trees or cutting down trees, and now you can see car park over over here. So I have written trees were planted on the northern location, which now has been chopped down. Now has been chopped down again. I have used passive voice over here, and a car park has been built again. Passive voice over its place. Interestingly, it's nice word to continue what you want to say. So interestingly, only four houses could be seen in the former structure. Here you can see in the former structure. One, two, three, four. There were just four houses. Could be seen. Okay, in the former structure, whereas now several apartments, new homes together with car park in between them are apparent in the current extension. Here you can see car park, river, and load of accommodation in the houses. So that's what I have written over here. I mean now, ah, uh, several apartments, new homes together with car park in between them are. apparent in the current extension so hopefully this would be really beneficial for you this is the end of the video but hit the like button and subscribe our channel for more videos thank you so much